So what's your new book idea, Melvin? It's the story of B, who discovers she's a witch and has extraordinary powers and can summon spirits. But witches are being pursued by the hunt, so B has to choose between her family and her fellow witches. And then there's the handsome man she meets who might be more than he seems. There's swearing and death and war crimes and sexy scenes between B and Lars. So B, she's like 19, 20... She's 13. What? 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 Melvin Burgess is a children's slash YA author known for books such as The Cry of the Wolf and Junk. To be honest, I am a little confused as to whether or not he's a children's or a YA author, as he's a Carnegie Medal winner, which I think is for children's books, but the themes he writes about in most of his books are more for teenagers, which pushes it into the YA category. Then in 2018, he wrote The Lost Witch, which again is very difficult to place. The age of the protagonist and the style of writing would put it in the children's section, but the themes and language would push it more towards the adult genre. Anyway, The Lost Witch is a fantasy about 13-year-old B who discovers she can see things other people can't after witnessing a hare hunt on the moors. She is baffled as to what is happening until a weird old man and little girl tell her she's a witch with the rare, powerful gift of summoning, but that she also has to leave her family and come away with them to avoid being taken by the hunt. B is surprisingly reluctant at first, but soon discovers she may not but soon discovers she may not have a choice. All the while she is growing closer and closer with the handsome young man at the skate park. Firstly, Burgess is very good at description. There are some truly beautiful bits of imagery throughout, especially when describing the various spirits that B can see and summon. And I feel like I say this every time I read a book that I didn't like, but I thought there were some genuinely good ideas in this. I love the hunt with their motorbikes and their quads. It sort of put me in mind of the four bikers of the apocalypse in Good Omens. I would have liked them to feature a bit more though, as they were mostly restricted to the background. I liked the ideas of some of the gifts, perhaps not so much the execution, and a few of the gifts were a little stupid and vague, and it's ambiguous whether or not there are some magics that all witches can do on top of their specific gifts, because bees seem to be learning a bunch that had nothing to do with summoning. But some of the gifts were cool, and again, I liked the idea of each witch having a specific power. I also liked that the witches had their own society, with judicial systems and all that. Not nearly as fleshed out as the Ministry of Magic from Harry Potter, make of that what you will, but an attempt was made. <laughs> By the way, there be spoilers from this point. Soz. An adult, or indeed young adult, book is not defined by its content. There are plenty of children's books that cover very serious topics, and several adult books that remain solely in the themes of innocence. Therefore, just because you've put in a couple of swear words and sort of sex scenes, it doesn't mean your book is suited to adults. In this case, it's suited to no one. Why? Let's take a look. The tone is wrong. There's something overly sanitised about this writing. It reads like a children's book, as in the voice you put on when reading to kids. Slightly exaggerated in a safe way with exclamation marks and constantly telling us how the characters feel. B was shocked. B smiled. She loved this. A birthday treat. B was delighted already. To use one of my favourite clips. You can't just have your characters announce how they feel. That makes me feel angry! Also, you lose marks for using blah 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 when a character isn't listening to what's being said. Following on, this book is all tell, no show. It's everywhere and annoying. Instead of telling us that B is too tender, too soft, and that inside B there beat a loving heart, show us. Also, show us more of the magic. Explaining it through dialogue is fine, but not enough of it is really shown or felt. It was all very distant, and it left me not really understanding half of their gifts. I mean, there's B with the power of Mary Sue, and Odie with the power of perpetual confusion, Silvis has the power of rabbit hutches, Lars has the power of Disney princess, and B's dad with the power of beauty and nothing else. What else is there? The pacing is shot, everything happens so fast, but is also repeated far too often. 
There are long stretches of reported action with too much focus on unimportant details like food. Characters have the same mundane conversations about their emotions instead of feeling their emotions again and again and again. And I reckon at least 50% of Lars's dialogue is him yelling, We're in a war, man! A lot of this could have been cut out to make room for more actual action instead of reported action. Or even better, a proper ending. Characters were either dull or unlikable, or both. Despite being the main character and staying nearly entirely within her head, we learn next to nothing about B. I don't know what she likes or doesn't like, her dreams, her wants, her hates. We know she has friends at the beginning, but we never learn their names. And as soon as they fulfill their role as a way of introducing B to Lars, they disappear entirely from the story. The setting was fine until I realized it was meant to be set in Yorkshire. This is not set in Yorkshire. I also could have done without the bit about a 13 year old's bust being described. That was weird. And it's just generally unpleasant, especially in view of things like abuse. There are two moments that stand out as particularly awful, but you need context to understand them. B is a witch, but her family thinks she's insane, so take her to the doctors. But the hunt has infiltrated the NHS and have machines they can use to remove a witch's spirit, which is the life force that gives witches their power. You can also take spirits from non-witches too, and so long as you replace it with the spirit of something else, like a frog, the body and memories will live, but it's also not them anymore. Uh, they're also called golems. And, and then there's one character who's more like the mythological golem from like Jewish mythology, in that he's made of clay. I don't know, it is weird and ill-explained. Lars, the boy from the skate park, who's like 17 or something, turns up as a surprise villain. So B summons an entire forest, as you do. Lars reveals himself to be a double agent and actually a good guy and smuggles her out of the hospital. He takes her away and she goes surprisingly willingly despite so much reluctance before. He trains her to be a soldier and how to steal the spirits of traitor witches. Their relationship is pretty disturbing. He treats her like a child, acting goofy and singing and dressing up as Father Christmas at Christmas to leave presents on her bed. They're hiding away for like two years and all. And during that time, he then starts shouting at her, swearing at her, hitting her, all the makings of an abusive relationship. I don't mind Burgess including this because it is meant to be abhorrent, but the tone just doesn't suit it. He also, and this is the squick bit, seduces her. And I mean, I say seduce, she says no many times, both with her actions and her words, but he coerces her into relenting. So it is actually rape. It's pretty awful. But again, if you want to write a paedophilic rape scene into your adult book, fine. He obvs turns out to be the actual villain after all, and he's way older than he looks. And in a shocking twist, he is this nasty evil guy from years ago who everyone thought was dead. B escapes and is reunited with her family, though her mum is now a golem, uh, and she has to face a witch trial for all of the innocent witches whose spirits she stole. The trial is awful. The jury is basically made up of her victims' families. She has to tell them everything that happened, then be told about her victims. After which, this totally unbiased jury judge whether or not she is guilty or innocent. There's a prosecuting and a defending speaker, sort of lawyers, I suppose, and the whole scene is just really horrible to read. But the thing that really upset me was that everyone, everyone, describes her a 15-year-old girl as sleeping with the evil guy, even though it was rape. And then not even the good guys make this distinction. She is obviously found guilty, told everything is all her fault, and that she must never, ever forgive herself for all these horrible things that she did herself, clearly willingly, forgetting that she had been groomed and gaslit and kept away from all other people since the age of 13 by this guy, the evil guy everyone told her was dead, and that she did try to run away once during the first reaping of a witch spirit, but was brought back. So even if she did realize he was evil, she didn't have much of a choice. It just reeked of victim blaming and there was no real justice. It was disgusting to read about and awfully and shocking and I hated it. Then the second thing, so her mum is a golem, but her spirit is still on earth. It helps B to escape from Lars, but also attacks her because she's angry, leaving her bruised and alone in a ditch. 
And then this is what the good characters have to say about it. Your mother's spirit loves you and wants to look after you, which is why it rescued you. But it's angry at your crimes, which is why it beats you. It's exactly because it did these things to you that makes me certain it must be her. Nothing else on earth can love you like that. I don't care how much you try to explain it away, like, oh, her memories are still in her golem and the spirit isn't a full person. You cannot say she beat her daughter because she loves her. That's an awful thing to say. And finally, finally, the ending was pretty lame. It got to the stage where I had about 20 pages left and B, who had pledged to return all of the spirits she had reaped to their bodies, assuming they weren't dead, uh, she's barely achieved anything. I checked for a sequel, none. I thought, how are they going to wrap everything up in 20 pages? Spoiler, they didn't. They go to the house where the mum's golem is, Lars, or whatever his name is, is being evil. B tries to summon his spirit out to stop him, but can't because of reasons that I don't want to explain. Then realises that Silvers' useless gift of rabbit hutches can also act as a shoehorn for stubborn spirits. So they pull out the spirit and everything is just sort of fixed. Like it ends on the mum getting her spirit back, which may or may not have been demon infested due to it being half in the underworld. And that's it. No mention of the other people who lost their spirits or if her punishment from the witch trial will be lifted or if her mum is a demon now it, or anything. It's just, it was one of the least satisfying endings I have ever read in my life. This book was stupid and I didn't like it. I cannot recommend it to anyone. It's too childishly written for adults, too inappropriate for children, and too harmful with its messages about justice, blame and forgiveness for teenagers. Zero out of ten. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 pounds. And really, for a book set in Yorkshire, there was absolutely no mention of tea. Disgraceful. <laughs>